And welcome back to the Podcast Chronicles. I am one of your hosts, Ronnie. And I'm Chaz Chart. And we are here today for our very first movie slash film. It is the Dawn of the Deep Soul, a Made in Abyss... Uh, movie 3. Yeah, movie 3. That's what we do. We start with the third movies. Yep. And just so we can clear it off right off the top, Chaz, is this a movie or a film? I would have to go with a film. You're giving sir. it film status. I'm going to give I'll, it film status. I'll tag, you, I'll tag along on that. I'll give it a film status as well. Yes, yeah, so it turns out we're doing this movie because it is the only one through my research that I found that takes place after season one of the show. Um, it's canon. And in a typical Ronnie Chaz move, what we've decided to do here is cover a movie that's not even on a legit streaming so, site in the U.S. Well, here's the thing. I will not pirate your films slash movies unless I have to. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do. I would have rented it. I would have gladly watched it on the Netflix. I would have gladly rented it off Amazon Prime. But no, you don't have it on there. And that's a weird... The season one was like... did Is it not considered an Amazon Prime original? original? So I guess the film it being uh, in the film theaters that it... We couldn't have any... It came out a year ago. There was no contract made up to help clear this. It's not a very good business model, is my point. It's not, and this is where I have a problem with the Japanese. They do, Whoa. they do things like this, and they don't understand that the West loves these things. Right, they could make so much more money. If they got to make them more accessible. Yeah. Hey, that, that's what Netflix's whole model is. Easily accessible, people will pay for it. If it's not, they're just going to pirate it. And that's exactly what we did. Anime, it's blowing up. You know, more It's almost and more, a little too much. More and more people are getting into it, and it needs to be accessible. That way they can find our podcast and we get rich. That's what I'm in it for. Not for yes. fun, not we for enjoyment rich. of uh, programs. I'm in it to get fucking filthy rich. Dude, we're almost there, too. We are, we are. getting there. Um, but no, I went, I just typed in, I don't even, you had watched it first somehow. Um, I just typed in Made in Abyss Movie Online Free. Found the first site that was going to do that. Had to click through about um, 932 yep. ads that led me to other websites. Eventually got it started and just stayed there. Yeah, that's kind of what happened with me too, um, and it's sad that I could not have rented it on Amazon and contributed to Bezos to a trilly. Now I don't know how many people actually do it. What we could have done, I think, is we could have, uh, if we listened to any of those hundreds of ads that podcasts slash Instagram slash YouTube videos try and force down our throats with the secure VPN thing. I think we could have weaseled our way into Netflix because I think it's oh, on yeah. Netflix, just not in the States. In Japan. But guess what? I am not the type of, you know, if I see an ad, even I say if I think that's going to be helpful to my livelihood, I think no, not nope. doing it. Not doing it. You're always about your livelihood. Because then I become an ad myself and I won't have it. Life is an ad. I've always said that. With that being said, mine was uh, dubbed. Was yours? Oh, or? my God. No. Yours was subbed? God. Yes, it was subbed. Really? Oh, my gosh. You've missed the best parts where they go kawaii and they say things like that. Well, that's, yeah, completely unneeded. Um, yeah, I got in. It was dubbed. I was kind of surprised considering I was like, wow, here I am watching a dubbed movie that's not even in America. That's um, interesting. But... There was no way I was backing out of it and clicking through 92 more ads to find a sub. I just rode with it. Which is also because Amazon it didn't even have a choice for dub, right? Yeah, it did. It did? Of course it did, Ronnie. Well, don't say it like that. Because yeah, well, I'm going to say it like that. OFC it did, Ronnie. Also, now, the, how, how was the... It would just be OC. How has... That's unless, not... Unless you were saying of fucking course. Well, that was what I was trying to say. <laughs> And, and in that case, W-Y-L, watch your language. <laughs> How are the dubbed voice actors of the show? Uh, everyone was good except Rico got on my nerves. Oh, really? 
Yeah, because don't you? I mean, you've watched enough dub stuff, don't you? Just know the type of yep. acting that that just Samelia. Uh, just so high pitched and how was fake. how was Bondrude? Bondrude was pretty badass. I gotta be really? honest. Really? Yeah. You good one. Yeah, I like. I could see that. Um. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. We pretty much pick up right where we left off. Uh, the gang descends further down in layer five. They come to the field of eternal flowers. Anything you like that name? <sighs> eternal. Yeah. I... All right. Chaz got a lot of thoughts there. Let's keep it moving. Um, <laughs> this is also the field that Reg imagined the pickaxe in from season uh, one. That's what I was going to say. Why I'm so confused here. He's obviously been here before. I'm not. I, I think it's not him imagining. I think that's memories. You know how his memories. Really? Were going? Okay. That's what I'm kind of come to the conclusion of. And you think the pickaxe was there? Yeah. Interesting. I think after watching this film that Reg was a person that went to the bottom and somehow got this contraption, lost his memory, and got sent back up. So he's already completed this task, and now he's helping Rico do it. And that's why he has memories of all these like different things. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I hope that it's something like you're talking about because it's weird. For because when you see that, you're like, oh, well, this is this is just foretelling to things that are going to happen down the road. Like the field of eternal flowers is going to be a big deal, and then I mean, it was kind of something, but not huge in the grand scheme of things. And what I'm afraid of is, you know, how later on in the film, Bondrud uh, refers to Reg as a relic, and I think he's been referred to as a relic before. Right. What I'm kind of afraid of is. Everybody that does these missions and gets to the bottom just turns into a relic. And it's the mission. There's never really the, the abyss just turns you into something that it wants you to be just to lure more people in. And it's like sucking the life force out of people. And as we see later, it's no spoilers or anything, but well, if you is, haven't seen the movie, don't listen. That's to true. This. Okay. As we see later, <laughs> somebody does turn into a white whistle. So makes me think that maybe that is what's, what's going on here. Okay. Interesting thoughts. Um, we see him do like, he zooms in with his eyes. Have we seen him do that before? I don't think so. Do you think they were actually, they were showing us that that's what he was doing, right? It wasn't I, some weird editing yeah, thing. I think. Yeah. Cause he does it the one time then he doesn't do it again. So I thought that was kind of weird. We meet one of Bondrude's minions and I wrote this down. These guys are the, uh, Umbra hands. Umbra hands. Yep. Okay. And you know, what's cool about that is Bondrude. Has. But, sorry, keep that thought. Someone probably heard that page turn. Yeah, Ronnie's. Uh, I had to watch the film on my laptop, so did a little handwritten notes. No big wow. deal. Going back to the Stone Ages. Hold on. Okay. Oh God. All right. Uh, all right. What I was trying to say. Is that chair. Okay. The Umbra hands. What's cool about this is that Bondrude's whistle is hands connecting together. Just a little tidbit that. Nice that you picked up on. Okay. I like it. And just when you thought this series couldn't get any more fucked. This is a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. Because, I mean, after we watched after we watched the end of season one, I didn't know if it could get worse. This movie outdoes itself. Congratulations. And it starts off pretty quick as the insects feed themselves to people to keep them alive while the other insects feed off the live being. Which is just a nevo, next level fucked thinking. Oh, it's just... The, by the way, the, the fill does look absolutely stunning and beautiful. Mm-hmm. I would be the dummy that just frolics around in this field and oh. just gets torn to shreds from the inside. You see a field like this, you gotta frolic. But no, I don't do well anytime I see... Flowers? Insects oh. crawling in and out of people's holes. B holes and eye holes and eye holes, mouth holes, nostril holes. That one yeah. really gets to me. Don't which like which none it. of them would have crawled through yours because you have well, deviated septum. If they went through the left nostril, they would have had a pretty clear pass. But that right one to turn around, dead end. Do you think like they're they know what they're doing in there? Like when they're in there, they know like oh I got to eat this, I got to eat that, or they just oh yeah for sure. It's um, 
It's nature, dude. Nature will always find a way, and nature just, they've got a sick sense about stuff like that. You know what's crazy, too? Obviously, they're keeping them alive, but if you ever find a dead body that's been dead for mm-hmm. a while in a field yeah. of flowers, more than likely, there's just bugs crawling in and out. I'll tell a quick story. One time, I was riding my four-wheeler. Um, you know, grew up as a kid riding four-wheelers. You know, badass. Wheeling around. Yeah. And, uh, God, I, I was, remember just straddling you on the back of that thing after oh, baseball yeah. games, just, just my holding dick, on, just right. You know, we were becoming young men, and our bodies were changing, and you were just hitting bumps, and why, I was just why was rubbing on. I, you used to tell me that that was your you, you would carry around a flashlight. I'm like, dude, it's yeah. 12 p.m. Well, the funny thing is, you had four four wheelers. You said, would you like to drive one? I said, no, I'll just. I'll ride with you. Yeah, you're always like, I'll, I'll keep my flashlight in here just in case we go in a dark tunnel. And I'm like, dude, it's 12 p.m. We're in my backyard. Yeah, it was always so weird to think about. Like it's it's you know it's a good amount of land. It's not that big. There's no tunnels. <laughs> yeah, tunnels. What the hell? I don't think I've ever been through a tunnel. Besides in a car, you know. Yeah. Um, we but yeah, go through more tunnels. But keep going. <laughs> I rode around in my four wheeler. You know, I was just booming, vrooming doing all that junk and i noticed that there was like a uh, a dead substance on the trail that i go through okay i was like what the Interesting heck for you to call it a substance continue it's like what the heck is this so i pull up i get off and i'm like slowly creeping towards it it was what i believe to be one of the neighbor's cats were you wearing a helmet yeah i still had the helmet on okay because you never know when something's gonna when you're in nature, you. yeah, keep yeah. the helmet on. So I'm walking up to it, and I'm like, I notice it's the neighbor's cat. Okay. And this cat was a very large cat. It's not like it was a little kitty. So I get up closer to it, and I grab Got a, a stick. Got a feeling that it's a good thing to say, hey, animal lovers, might want to skip forward a few minutes, keep going. So I grab a stick and poke it, Yeah. and there's just maggots coming all out of the eyes and crawling all over this thing. I mean, and its mouth was wide open, spewing out of the mouth. <laughs> So, okay. needless to say, this animal had been uh, deceased for okay. probably a few days. Just a disgusting sight to see. Uh, um, yeah. So I, I got back on my four-wheeler, ran over it, just kept riding, and I'm just, I didn't run over it. But I went over it, I told my dad, I was like, Daddy, there's a cat out there, it's dead, and there's bugs everywhere. And he's just like, okay, what do you want me to do about it? He's like, so don't it stayed touch there. it. Yeah, so I didn't touch it. It stayed there, and eventually I saw the bones of it. Like That's how quick nature is. It was just a few days later. It was mm-hmm. just skeleton because they just ate the shit out of it. Yep. So. One more quick thing about how nature has, you know, six cents. You, you ever going to have to die from an animal? I'm picking a jungle cat. They, uh-huh. they know to go for the, neck, for the neck, and they know to keep going. To f- They know where the jugular is. They're going to yeah. find the jugular. They're going to make it quick for you. They are, unless it's a herd of, not herd, a pack of lions and you are a two-ton buffalo, then it's kind of a little bit riskier there. Mm-hmm. But. And they could confuse me with a buffalo, depending, you know, on how I've been treating myself lately. <laughs> but I've always said, some people, I've always said, if I have to die by the hands of an animal or the mouth of an animal, yeah, I will put on a gazelle outfit okay. and frolic through the African Sahara. And the reason I say that is because gazelles, they die very easily from tigers slash lions slash hyenas, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, it would kill me quick. I'm a skinny gazelle. What do you think about moving on into the uh, second minute of the movie? Let's do it. All right. Film. So, well, you watch the movie. It's the dub. I watch the film. So. <laughs> also, <laughs> that's a funny line. And um, it makes me want to punch you even harder the way that you were hitting your vape right there because you were holding your fingers up as if you were fine, or sipping a fine tea. And I've never wanted us to be more on camera just so people could see how big of a douchebag you look like. <laughs> I, I had to use use it for that comment, you know? <laughs> so there's a fire and just chaos ensues. Um, Reg manages to get out of there. And the, right off the bat, the... The interesting thing is the Umbra hands are, he's pretty much helping Reg. You know, he's yeah. saying, get out of here. You know, I thought maybe we'd have a run-in with this guy and there'd need to be a fight. But no, he was kind of just moving him along. And he said something along the lines, what was it he said? He was like, he's not here or something? Yeah. 
And so Nanachi leads them to uh, Bondrud's base. And, yeah, I mean, this guy, great villain all the way throughout this thing. He's creepy. He's got the skeleton hands uh, necklace, which turns out to be his whistle. I didn't realize that in season one. It makes a lot more sense now. And that's the hands yep, interconnecting. The hands class. Um, Should have known. We just learn more. There's more conversations about um, Nanachi, or Nanachi looking at reg and seeing that his incinerator basically has three uses left what did you think of that i was very upset by that see my first instinct was like okay that feels cheap because we've never heard anything like this in season one um i'm giving it a little bit of a slide because obviously most of it was just reg and rico by themselves Mm -hmm. rico clearly didn't know this and Re- Reg obviously doesn't know because he doesn't really remember right. anything. He's been with Nanachi for a while, but I, you know, maybe she. I'll allow the fact that they've not known each other that long. She's just now really examining him. They say, "What do you think about this whole base here? Just the, you know, it's kind ter- of the setup. It's terrifying. The, it's a pretty scary base. I mean, it's just like a, it's just like a prison. And even if you are a guest who." You know, they give you like food and stuff. Mm-hmm. I would still be like, oh, I'm fucked. It's very cold, a lot yeah. of stone. It feels like it's just a big, it's compromised or uh, comprised of you walk in and it's one big stone circle hallway. And then, like, on the inside and maybe on the outside, there's just some rooms. Yeah. And it's like, just... I don't think they got too fancy with the blueprint. They just no. went in with the idea of they wanted it to be a circle and they went from there. Science. And then, um, so with that being said, they show them the toilets, which is essentially just shit into the hole. It's the most efficient outhouse I think I've ever Mm -hmm. seen. You ever used an outhouse being down here from the south? Uh, does Porta Johns, do those count? No, 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 no. Um, I mean, I've shit in the woods. If Uh, you're, listen, first of all, I hate that question. An outhouse is an experience. A porter potty, porter john, as you called it, if you're pooping into a vat of stinky, um, stinky but still, you know, stinky to be less stinky than the alternative of just a pile of poo. Basically, my point is if you're pooping into a uh, stinky blue liquid, you're not having an outhouse experience. Okay. Well, this is about as close as I've come to it. When I was mm-hmm. the age of 14 and 15, um, I would go over to the, the local neighborhood where all my friends were. We would have slumber parties. Um, and at night, we would sneak out and be like, we're, oh, we're so rebellious. Yeah. We would go out to the golf courses. Okay. Because it was the neighborhood was in on a golf course or whatever. Or the golf courses on a neighborhood, however that however you speak of that. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we come to find out that they move the, the holes so, like, on each green, they move the hole every morning. I didn't know if you knew that. And I that's most places. Well, I, yeah, I know that they move them. I didn't know every morning. That's fun. Yeah, almost every morning, and especially on, especially on the weekends. Maybe it's not hey, every morning. Hey, but wonder where this is going. So, we decided when we found that out that we would, you know, be really rebellious and poop in the golf holes. So, we did that multiple times, and we I like to imagine that the... 19 year old that's waking up at four in the morning to go work at his golf course job just stares at the hole and goes who did this <laughs> and has to move it he just <laughs> he just looked at him and just goes why does this keep <laughs> happening to me it was so many times too and i wasn't the best at pooping uh in just golf holes, especially with people around, I wasn't the best. I was kind of a scared pooper. Was it a squat technique? How- squat technique. Okay. But one of my buddies, Tommy Boy, I've mentioned him before, is an excellent on-the-spot pooper. Yeah. And he had some gnarly, gnarly shits that he would take in these Would holes. you always get it right in there? Or would there be a time where you kind of missed and it kind of was hang- hanging on the side yeah. and someone kind of had to scoot it in there? Yeah, if it was hanging on the side, we would leave it and let it be like one of those where it's like drenched in. We we made we try to make it look as on purpose as possible, right? Because and then well, we, it, 
you know, there was no way that you couldn't make it look on purpose. No one accidentally just shits in the golf course. Well, well I like to think the first time they're like, what animal did this? Well, and then after like the fifth and sixth time, they knew <laughs> what was going down. Um, by the way, that is not an outhouse experience. Thank you for okay. telling the story. I'll tell you about an outhouse. My grandfather had an outhouse. It's a, uh, you know, wood building. We had a crescent moon on our door, a nice crescent moon. Nothing makes me uh, want to poop like uh, seeing a moon. <laughs> And because I'm getting ready to pull out my own moon and sit down on the outhouse. Yeah. And when you walk inside, it's basically just a wooden platform, you know, just some two by fours, perhaps, maybe, you know, supply wood structure of some sort. Okay. And, um, and then you just have probably like a circle saw or something. You just saw a hole out right on the wood. And then below, you would typically have some sort of, uh, canister some sort of bucket to catch what you were putting out there would there be water in the bucket nope no nope, not, so not in my nice. house luckily the outhouses i used were pretty much out of commission okay uh so i couldn't tell you about the whole smell but uh you know it's it feels weird it's one of those things where you it shouldn't feel any different but just knowing it you're like wow i'm really doing something different here did you use pine cones to wipe? Or? No, no, no. There was toilet paper in the outhouse okay. because you got to understand, I'm not that old. So really the outhouse was more just for the outhouse experience, more mm-hmm. so than need to. We had plumbing, but when you get a chance like that, you don't turn it down. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of that. But anyway, did you see the holes for their toilet? They're too big. They, you yeah, could easily fall into one of these. There was no yeah. handles. I mean, very dangerous. It was like they were the poop. Because they could fit inside the entire hole. It really was. So, I love... The poops? The I, No, I moved on. Oh. People probably didn't enjoy that talk too much, I would imagine. Uh, probably spent too much time on it. So, moving on. I love the idea of the staircase in this place. Yes. Because it, from a visual standpoint, it's awesome. All it is is one of those bullshit chains and a dark staircase that leads to like the important shit that you would want to keep under lock and key, but due to the curse of the abyss, you just leave it. Why anyone can go up there? Yeah. Anyone can go up there. Dare you to go? But try it. Try it out. See how it works. Love it. And so Rico, um, Rico. there was uh, the only complaint I have about this whole movie is film. Well, yeah, you watched. Well, the movie. this is this is yeah. I watched the movie because I watched the dub. It is a, the contents film, but when you watch the dub, it was a little movieish. And I'm getting ready to complain about a couple things. That's why I'm, you know, movie still there. They sometimes there's a bit of a weird edit. I on this particular one, I will say I think it's probably intentional because they get shown their room, they kind of pass out, and then the next thing Rico's just walking the hallway, and you're like, what? What's going on? Okay. Because she's looking for the other two. She she comes across the staircase. So it didn't show her waking up? and Because the one I saw, she like wakes up. And well, maybe, she, she, maybe okay. she woke up and the other two were just gone. Yeah, yeah, that's how it was. So I guess she just woke up and the other two were gone and went looking for them. And gets the staircase. She says she's looked everywhere else. She starts to go up it. She starts spitting up blood, which isn't great. That. And then they just do this thing where she keeps going, and basically, it's just like... It's like the Squidward, uh, the future episode of Squidward, f- kind of. Future! Where yeah. he gets, and he's in the elevator, and he gets sent to like that uh, dimension of just white, almost. Yeah, it, that's what it turns into, yeah, the white dimension. And it's also like she just gets run through a cheese grater. Because at first it starts with a little slice on the cheek. Mm-hmm. And then her whole body just becomes like a cut, essentially. Ugh. And just, now it turns out she had passed out before then, I guess, fallen back down the stairs. Um, we meet Prushka, by the way. I hadn't Prushka. mentioned that yet. And um, her little sidekick. And a little sidekick. How do you pronounce what, that? Mani? Ma- Mani? Mania. 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 Um, cute little. It's not that cute. Cute. I think this is an adorable animal. Cute actions. The sounds and stuff it made, very cute. Um, the thing itself, not that cute. I, I would love for this thing to fly on my shoulder. And really? Lick me in the face, yes. I've seen cuter. 
Ronnie with a hot take. I've seen cuter. All right. There's cuter. But also, here's another take. People love pugs, and they're not cute. They're just not. Well, a baby and they're like, pug, oh, but they, cute. But they're so ugly, they're cute. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. no, I'm if with that you. was the case, then me and you would get called cute all the time. Puppy pugs? Cute, one, because you get to say puppy pugs. Okay, yeah. Um, and two, they are cute. And then, But yeah, like a full-grown pug, eh, you know. See, that's what makes this I'll thing so cute to me. It's not that it just looks adorable, but it looks a little fluffy. It's got little wings, mm-hmm. and it makes cute little noises. And also, mania, not that cute of a name. Yeah, they could have made it like uh Because if it was woman-ya. cute, you would have remembered, you would have remembered it. Yeah, but you wo- didn't. woman or something. I don't like the man. It's well, too much like a man. Hey, woman very terrible. Very terrible name. I'm glad you didn't name it because that's awful. Terrible. Look at me. Mm-hmm. Awful. And um, going up the stairs takes away sense of touch and balance, which are, I think, some underrated senses. <laughs> you know, you don't... You don't know you need them until they're gone. I've lost my balance a time or two. But they are like, you know what? We're not going to be held down. They try again. Also, her molar gets Comes, like yeah. cracked, which they did. It was because uh, she was grinding her teeth dude, and didn't stop. Know it. Don't say that out loud. Ugh. I don't like the image or the thought of grinding teeth and actually grinding so hard. them until. Just put your teeth together. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm not doing it. Dude, put your. I'm te- not doing it. I'll do it. Put your teeth together and imagine how hard. You would have to grind it to break your molar. Have chip you, your molar. Have you ever woken yourself up from grinding your teeth from like a dream or something? Because I have and been like, ah, my jaw kind of hurts. Not, I was not near the point of tearing my tooth out. Well, here's the good news. Due to the state of my nose, I'm a mouth breather when it sleeps. So I don't think I, they do too much grinding. Yeah. Yeah, you haven't had too much grinding. Yeah, not a whole lot of grinding anywhere on me. So non non uh, cheese what? grinding. What? Uh-uh. Well, that's grating, but <laughs> you get your gr words mixed up. That's fine. Uh, meanwhile, non and uh, Bondrude are reconnecting, and this was interesting because this is a sweet relationship. <laughs> <laughs> they they do a good job of kind of. Because from what we saw in season one, they didn't seem like they knew each other. Here, they're kind of like old co-workers in a way. Yeah, there was one part in season one where it kind of shows that she was helping him. They, but they didn't go too much in it at all. They do kind of in, um, insinuate that after the whole thing with her and Mitty, she was there for a little bit while, longer because they show Mitty like in a room and saying that, you know, they've revived her so many times and Nanachi's still roaming around. So they did kind of leave that there, but we still didn't really know the nature of that. I guess I'll say it just in case I forget to mention it later. We basically find out that she was essentially forced basically to help him perform some fucked up operations. And and what's sad about it is she was forced to, but she feels guilty about it because she could have probably left sooner, but just kept going along with it. I got the. Um, That's how I kind of. I got that. the feeling that she was having to have to bide her time to where yeah. she could get Mitty and leave. She couldn't just leave. That was. Whew. That kind of that kind of brings me back though when people, you know, are forced to do terrible things. But they kind of get lost in the sauce yeah. and forget that they're actually doing terrible things because they they become semi numb to it. Right. So that brings me back to uh, it's kind of like your masturbation addiction, but yeah. Oh God, that. Yeah, I've become so numb to that. This hand is just. It's not done kind its of job. like it used to. I've had to switch it up. Go to the other hand. But no, it brings me back to like the owl in attack on Titan, how he talks about him cutting fingers and stuff. He's like, at some point he was just like, what am I even doing? Right. Yeah. He's just like numb to it. Yeah. You remember I got quite irked by that. I was like, <laughs> Cause he, he was on a timeline and he's just like, I'll just spend 13 <laughs> years just cutting off fingers. I'll make my move. Talk about procrastinating. Yeah. That's literally like say a project, like a teacher being like, all right, You've got 13 years to complete this project, and you just being like, well, I'm just going to dick around for 12, 12 <laughs> years and 11 months. I had 13 and... years. I don't need to get started until 12 and a half years yeah. from now. 
Meanwhile, we see Reg strapped down for experiments. Uh, I didn't like how this uh, first night, you know, first night. Yeah, they they got fooled so hard. Like it was just a little. You think obviously I know they were probably exhausted, but first night, be a little skeptical, right? Yeah, I. <laughs> I mean. Do a little. I, I like to think Bondrude's just thinking the whole time. Science rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, luckily, um, what did you think about the method of not or uh, not not Rico and uh, Prushka getting up the stairs? They obviously use mania. I, I, did you kind of understand what was going they, on? It was kind of confusing. So apparently me. you could rub her feathers okay. and be able to see like little pockets of... The curse? Pockets of safe haven in the curse yeah. to where it doesn't affect you, which I thought was really cool because it, it made me think, did, is mania, is that a hollow as well? Do you know? The creature? Yeah. Well, what did we decide a hollow was exactly? The reason I say that is because Mitty, uh, well, Nanachi is a hollow, and I guess she she well, can talk and stuff. But, but the reason I'm saying that is because Mitty, they used Mitty to heal. She had Mitty actually had healing properties that healed uh, Rico. Yeah. That made me think, oh, maybe this mania, even though it probably is just a creature, but maybe it is a hollow. And it's like properties of usefulness is finding little pockets of... Because that was something we got wrong in season one. The way that Nanachi initially said it, we were like, are hollows people that come from off somewhere elsewhere off the island? But then they talked about it in this one. It does seem like it's just anyone who's altered by the yeah. curse or something like that. Because she calls herself a hollow. Which is a good name for the ones who are like Mitty, for example. It's like that off. I could see the word hollow. Nanachi is a hollow isn't, herself. Isn't hollow, but I yeah. guess she's still a hollow because she's been altered significantly. Yeah. I don't. That's an interesting. I definitely, if I had to guess, I would say Mania's just a uh, creature from down here. But I don't know. But they managed to get up to. Uh, Reg just in time. They escape, and I mean they're cutting off his arm. There, the weird, creepy shit continues. What do you in, mean in this film? What uh, do you mean? What do I mean? Yeah, I mean, which instance would you like for me to talk about? There's not hardly any in this. We could talk about besides her drawing a penis. That was the only one. We could talk about her drawing a penis. Penis. We could talk about uh, Rico. Talking about when Reg's penis grows, how then she well, followed Pruska followed that up with, oh, that's like my daddy's. She did um, not say that. No, Unless, she well, said she, that. She might have said that in the dub. She, she said, said that, she says said that in the movie the dub. In the sub, she says, "Oh, that's a papa rod." <laughs> so that made me. And just that's think why she it's a saying, film for cool lines like that. That's why it made me think her saying papa rod, which is just an awesome term. I'm going to start um, using. I'm not done yet. Uh, there's also Reg being his penis being strapped up into a vacuum system, getting his urine, and then spending a lot of time on discussing that. And then perhaps the weirdest one was in memory of uh, Pruska when it was a picture of her with a ginormous rack, and she's like twelve. Oh yeah, that one was. A little... <laughs> that was so weird. The, see the the whole reg thing didn't bother me because I'm like oh they're doing science experiments like they're they're doing anything and everything that's these guys are weird as fuck that's kind of normal for what they're doing but the whole the to me the drawing the penis just seemed unnecessary and talking about his stiffy and then the papa rod saying and then the the rack of prushka was so anime <laughs> I mean that was weird. So anyway, they get the hell out of there. Um, it was pretty easy. It's almost they kind of let them go. It, yeah, they. It's Which such a weird situation. Makes sense. I mean, doesn't make sense in the sense that I feel like they could have stopped them there, and at this point, it's just they can't go anywhere. It's not like they can yeah. go up. This place is only so big, only so wide, so they know like, well, they can't go down, they can't go up. We're gonna find them eventually. 
but it still seems like you would, you know, why go on a wild goose chase if well, you don't have to? It's because Papa Bondrude, he loves him, and he doesn't want to do that to him. So they set up a trap that includes some, like, scary spider things. This was cool, you know, the, these kids, they really are smart. Yeah. Because there's times, this is also um, what I thought I had a complaint about the movie slash film, is there were many points where they were talking about something, and I kind of thought that I knew what they were talking about or how something worked, but at the same time I was like, am I getting this? Do I really understand what's going on? And so then after the thing, I went and kind of looked at the wiki. Turns out pretty much every time I knew what they were saying, but they just talk about it so quick and Mm -hmm. it's things that we've never heard about before like the um the zoaholic or whatever it is they just real quick they'll get some lines in there and we rarely even see it but i still uh, turns out i kind of knew what it did but i wasn't sure that i did if that makes sense and that's what makes me think that not that it was rushed but turning this into a film and not having extra episodes, those things were kind of condensed and they just did them, did buy those real quick. Real quick. That's where I think sometimes when they, when these companies turn stuff into films, they, they almost not miss things, but they definitely make things go by quicker. Like even that, that happens with like any anime really, where it's like, I, I would almost rather just be episodes. To me, it's the kind of thing where, I feel like I was locked in and I still barely got it. If anyone, you know, went to get up and do something or they would have been completely lost. They would mm-hmm. be like, wait, what? How is he controlling these people? Because we'd never, like, we didn't hear about it in season one. It was all just like, they went down to a new area and they dropped 10 new things on us, you know, quick. And to the mov- movie's credit, and this is more like a film they it moved really well like the pacing was good yeah. there was no slow parts like i was kind of surprised with how much they were doing you know important stuff the whole time and, and going back to you saying that these kids are smart there was one comment that i realized i was like holy shit like i didn't even realize she she memorized like every relic before she even went on this journey yeah which is pretty crazy that just shows like how dedicated she actually was to I yeah, guess moving down. These like this part right here. I feel like in another movie, this would be the point. They escape, and then there's just a lot of dilly dallying for like twenty to thirty minutes before they come back. Where in this case, they leave, they follow right after, and then we get one of the cooler scenes in the um, the film here. And, and this is one. There's a few instances where it's more just Bondrew just standing there and walking around where I see some CGI and I'm like, Oh, that looks a little off. Like that doesn't go. I was like, that's not the cleanest of looks, but when they start fighting, you can tell is where they really spent their efforts of right. animating it, where it looks just awesome. Even a lot of just the like nature shots or like the fighting, you can tell that it was amped up from the TV. Like they oh, put yeah. their effort into it. Um, but yeah, they get this trap, a bunch of the umber hands, Die. Bondrew doesn't care. Doesn't give a frick. Coolest motherfucker out there. He's chill. Chill as can be. Gets out of whatever situation he was in. We got a bit of a duel on our hands, and I loved this thing. With his, especially, this is where, one of the best dub parts, just him going, remarkable. <laughs> Marvelous. Yes. I didn't watch, the, I'm sure it's awesome in the dub. <laughs> But I I did love that part where he's just talking the whole time. Like right. he's just like, wow, this is y'all are really good. Like, it was just funny being yeah. in English, and he just keeps they're just sending everything at him. He's just like remarkable, marvelous. He really is a great villain. What did you think? First of all, the move to get him you know down into the water, and then Reg using you know his arm is basically like a slingshot catapult thing to just send him flying up. To the cursed fucks him up was awesome. Yeah. And then just drops the rock right on top of him. And so right then at that point, what were you thinking? Were you like It's okay. like holy shit, they just ended him. I was like, they're they're gonna move on, and that was the I, I really thought I was like, wow, they did that quick, and now we're just gonna keep going down. Because of our theories, 
I was like, oh shit, so he's not even the worst bad... I was like waiting for us to like come across Liza or some shit. Because mm-hmm. we got some crazy theories about her. But, um, but no, what ended up happening was pretty cool as well. The pretty Umber epic. Hand just walks over, takes the helmet off, puts it on, and just morphs back into... Once I saw that, I was like... Bondra. Uh, as soon as i saw that i was just like fuck there's they're they're not gonna beat this guy (laughs) yeah i mean what do you do at that point and so then this this is where things get a little crazy it's one of he kind of explains the whole idea of making dissension down is a love which they kind of touched on in season one you know that was kind of his theory he pretty much says it right here that to come out of something like mostly unscathed, that's what you gotta have. Classic stories, oldest time, love mm-hmm. wins at the end. It's beautiful. Tear and up. <clears throat> he basically, you know, takes Prushka, lets them be, and says, "We'll see you soon." So, as soon as he said that, were you thinking this guy's not as bad as he seems? No, I knew this guy was just how. <laughs> How crazy is it, though, that... Because when he said that, I saw where it was going. Yeah. After Pre- the after... monstrosities of season one, I was like, well, I see how this is oh, working. Dear. Because when you see... Because they, they laid it right there out for you. You knew you it drop was a, She watched her dad fight these three kids. We drop a rock on his head. He's bulging out of his suit, and she's still like, Fa- Father! Dad! Daddy! Oh. That's and just the like, most uh, fucked up things. And his, his, you know, his voice is so Papara. dead and cold, even when he's saying things that aren't dead, like, oh, Prushka, my, oh, my daughter. My, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he has no emotion behind his voice. And I don't know if I wrote it down here, but at some point they have the whole conversation of, I guess it was when uh, Nanachi was talking with him. And she was asking, like, well, she says she's your daughter, is that... And he goes on this whole tangent of, I like to think of family as not being just blood. Mm-hmm. But, you know... In my head, he said sacrifice. I don't <laughs> yeah. I don't think yeah. he said that, but looking back on it, he was just basically setting yeah, it up. Yeah, I just heard, my sacrifice! <laughs> <laughs> um... And then at the most confused part, or this is where I got the most confused, they go back, they've devised this plan, um, they stroll in, and Reg does something with the electricity. Mm -hmm. What did you think about all this? Did you know what was going on? This is where I was definitely the most confused as well. All right, so I think if we were to criticize the film, this would be the point. This was what I didn't know what they were doing. Did he essentially just suck up the energy? So, you tell me what you know about the Zoaholic. Not much at all. Just, okay. It's like basically controls things. But so, this is this is what I took from him doing it, though, is that he just unplugged a certain part and just sucked up the energy that was going from it or going to it. And, uh, and that's fine. But then I was like, so what do you think they thought was happening? I don't know. I, I I'll be honest. Th- this whole... 10 minutes section right here. Yeah. I had not much of a clue of anything that was going on. So let me try and help you out and then help anyone else out who was confused. So they show, they literally show the Zoa, they talk about it some and then they show it like one time. Do you remember seeing it? Yeah. The big like tube thingy. Like membrane. Slash, yeah, membrane. Pink yeah. and green or whatever. So it says it only opens up when it's being used and the whole idea is that it allows the user to transplant transplant their mind into other living beings spreading the consciousness through the bodies so the uber hands they're just black whistle delvers yep that bond druids captured stolen you know whatever and then he takes them and, you know, basically, for lack of a better term, plugs them up to this thing, transfers his consciousness, and that's why... He's able to switch. Yeah, they're all connected. 
his thoughts are essentially their thoughts. They can pass thoughts to other extensions. See, um, and this is what scared me into thinking, oh, God, he's going to try to do this with Reg or Rico. Right. But. So yeah, it says that it protects itself when inactive. I don't know if electricity has anything to do it. It doesn't seem like it. It just seems, I don't know. But, and then it also says that um, humans are incapable of enduring the division of their consciousness and thus after a short while of using the zoholic, abnormalities begin to surface including the subjects going insane. So that at least helped me because then I was like, well, why is he a huge scary lizard man? And at first I thought it was because he'd been down to the sixth layer and it was something about the curse it turns out i don't think it is i think it's purely off this machine i believe mm-hmm. that he really has not been down further than this yeah that's that's kind of what i got from it too i don't because they make a point also why i was like well is this thing plugged up to electricity they make the point to show that when he reg cuts the power that all the umber hands start like disconnecting or like losing their shit like they don't they go offline yeah essentially and that's because it's not all connected to where they're not where they're all like a hive mind essentially right but the part i'm still fuzzy at is how the electricity has anything to do with the uh zoholic maybe the maybe those connectors each go into the consciousness of yeah. one of the umber hands and then that's how they're all connected to that one right. central thing um I also, did you get the feeling around this point, I guess when he hadn't really touched Rico at all, this is where I kind of thought that, I think he even says to Prushka, this is the White Whistle's daughter at one point. He he tells her that one of them is the kid of a White Whistle. Did you get like the... And that's before they're even there, because he he knew they were coming. Mm Mm-hmm. Whether that was because of... And that's because he can see through Nanachi. Can he? Yes. Does he say that? That's a, it... that's like at the end, too. Nanachi goes, oh, he'll be able to see everything. We, he'll be a part of this journey because he can see everything that I do. Okay. But, which I, I'm still fuzzy on how that works, but I had the feeling that he, he not once was going to do anything to Rico. Okay. Did you get that at all, or did you think eventually he would try to do something? Well, honestly, I don't know because I don't think he has a need for her per se. Unless he, the only reason is maybe experiment on her, like he did with the other kids slash hollows. He wants Reg because of the technology, and then I think he just purely wants Nanachi just because he's got some you know weird Success. bond with her, and and she's like one of the only successful right cases. Yeah, exactly. But it made me think, oh, God, is he, like, friends with Liza? Right. Well, it definitely, he definitely knows Liza. Yeah. And he somehow knows, unless, I guess he could know that that's Liza's daughter, based if he can see, you know, through Nanachi, they've talked about that, and he was able to put two and two together. Or maybe it's even more spelled out there how he knows her because he knows Liza that well and she's told him or something like that. Because that's the other thing. Rico made the point when he was she was talking to Prushka. Rico's completely fine and doesn't even... She straight out said, I don't even know if my mom was the one who sent the note, but someone did. And I really don't even so much care about going to see her as much as I am just want to go see what's down there. And I mm-hmm. like going on adventures! That's how she said it. She's With drawn, those two. She's drawn to the abyss. And then, okay, the other thing is they talk about him turning things into basically the Pruskas before Pruska cartridges. Oh, dude, stop that. <laughs> Don't call it that. That's what they call it. <laughs> and uh, this is... uh, they're like in his backpack. Yeah. It's like a, it's literally like a fucking cartridge, printer cartridge. And the way it was, uh, they remove all body parts that aren't or uh, necessary organs to live. 
So, so it's essentially a suitcase f- full of important organs. Yeah. They cut off all the limbs and then... Oh, dude. Well, and I mean, it's all in the name of love, though, as we come to find out. Right. And I still... What exactly does that give him? Wasn't it giving him the ability... During fights, wasn't he using part of the cartridges to... I don't know if it just gives him the power because he also has, and I didn't, I mean, I saw it when he, it happened in the film, but I didn't exactly realize what I was watching. When I went and read up on it, he had, you know, it was like connected to his elbow or something. He shoots it out at him. Mm -hmm. He essentially has a relic like Reg's incinerator. Did you realize that or did you connect the fact that that's what it was? But it's not as good as Reg's though. It's definitely smaller, so I could see that that's, you know, perhaps what's going on. But yeah, he's got one of those two. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what the cartridge does. Um, but anyway, the we see Prushka's backstory, which isn't sad at all. So I was glad they showed us that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude, there's just some parts... I feel like I was more shocked and sad from the end of season one. I kind of expected this to be sad, but it's just, there's something about this show that makes me feel a way that I don't think I've felt in any other. No, I was thinking sometimes when I'm uh, watching something, I think about what I'm going to say on the podcast. And the whole time I was watching this was, I was like, well, my line throughout the podcast is just, I don't have fun watching this show. It's like a, it's like driving by a car wreck when y- you really don't want to see, but also you have to see yeah. like what's going on. Yeah, and I would even, I would say this is like a multi, multi car uh, pileup, <laughs> and everyone is just squished, and you see everything. That's Fantastic. what I really yes think. As if we weren't having a hard enough time. Thank you, Chadley. But yeah, we see she is just another one of, I guess the run-of-the-mill kids that he had and was sending down there. Um, she came back up, was horribly screwed up. Dude, like, this, yeah, this is where the, this... <laughs> it just gets me, man. <laughs> it gets me into like a whole... It really makes you... It's confusing. It, it, I need to hear like a fully... Like whoever wrote this, I want to hear his whole... Ex, his or her whole explanation of this whole thing because it's very trippy and... I know, I know for a fact the person that did, like they're probably pretty smart, and I would, I would even, I wouldn't be afraid to say that this person might have thought about doing this type of stuff. We might want to put this person down between yeah. how they're coming up with this stuff and then some of the other uh, concerning stuff. I don't know. I, I don't know, and it makes it. I hate what I hate about this. Whatever they put out next, I'm watching. But it's also the kind of show where if they came out and said. Things fell apart. We can't do season two of Made in Abyss. I would go, thank God. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's just him showing love and affection, essentially. It's almost like he's confused with love his other... Love and affection other, without love and affection. Without love and affection. But it's like he's confused with his own subconscious, and it's just... It's so terrifying. Like I, That's the only word I have, is just terrifying. All the lo- it's purely just through actions essentially because th- th- there's no love in his voice or love in I mean we don't see their whole relationship but whatever Prushka becomes after you know being experimented on she doesn't know any better so that's all she just thinks of him as Papa and she didn't even know what was going on like that's the interesting thing too she's been force fed basically her memories yeah because she tells rico earlier on when talking about mania yeah papa gave them to me when i was 10 but when we see in the flashback she was hiding behind or like hiding in corners couldn't even speak yeah when he gave her no hair or anything and then when she finally started you know it helped her develop some he just told her that that was a big day for her. That was her 10th birthday. It, I mean, there's and no way. She might be eight. I, there's, yeah. We don't know. That was him being nice. 
he's, so, he's a good from what I'm getting by this, he's not as bad of a guy as we think he's he is. He's not as bad as we think. Did the did the black whistles willingly? I don't think so. Okay. Why cause why would they? I mean that's a fair point. I just don't I think it's just his own I like now maybe I don't know this whole uh it says his name was Guerra. I don't know his whole situation. He might have been helping a partner of some sort, helped him get the first Umbra hands, and then he just made him one himself, like turned turned on him. But yeah, I mean, so we get the final showdown, um, which was cool. Just the whole uh, Reg turning into Going whatever into... comic book character he did. It didn't even Ghost Stallion. It didn't even really fit with the animation, but it was. You know, something to behold, and uh, I thought and it, it was, did. It was, they said something about that releasing like his true power, and I was like, "Wait, what?" True. Pa- he he also says something like he makes it seem like someone else with inside of him helped guide him to helped guide him to remember how to use certain things. That, I think that was his one of his sayings. He said that they helped him remember things. So you want my crazy thing okay. here what if reg is someone's umbra hand and someone's he, controlling he got, him this entire time maybe they haven't split themselves into you think it's as, Liza's? well i mean that's really the only person i could guess at this point um they haven't split their consciousness so many times so whereas we saw Bondrud's um, they were just going around saying like one two words at a time. Rico's or uh, Reg's got a little bit more to him, and that's even creepier because he's been getting a stiffy from Nanachi's fur and from uh, what's her name Rico. So that means Liza well, has been getting a stiffy, and that's probably that's probably not the case just because he. Um, it seems like if that was the case, he could have had these other moves unlocked the whole time. I mean, he made it seem like they weren't unlocked until he got the electricity jolt. So I don't know exactly what all's going on there. But uh, what did you think of kind of the whole fight where, um, like, the Umber Hand goes, dives at him, they fall down, and then you know, he goes back I up. That was such a cheap move by that dick bag. I know. I was so mad. Bondrew all of a sudden becomes Venom and uh, shooting out, like, black sticky web to capture things. Yeah, he captured him. For sure, he captured him while he was in that black stallion mode, right? Yeah. As far as fights go, I uh, I liked the one the after they one. first escaped mm-hmm. more, but this was still fine. And then obviously, uh, it was just one of those things where it felt kind of anticlimactic when they finally did kill him because it's just Rico. Well, uh, well, Rico does. I mean, she that was grabs cool. his yeah, other yeah, hand. He, right? She she gets kind of split up. So I take that back. She gets split up. Ghost grabs the hand and then basically, I guess, hits the incinerate button. Mm-hmm. Who knew that there well, was a button? Then he you know? said, "That was in, that was marvelous. The fact that you could <laughs> use that that which makes me think he tried to use the incinerator uh, okay. while the hand was off and he couldn't. Which then makes me think that she has some weird connection of why she was able to use it and he wasn't. Okay, and it might be the love connection <laughs> with Reg." So they do all that. Then there's the very uncomfortable scene where uh, Prushka's suitcase starts spewing out blood. Um, Mania's looking up the Dude, blood, that, which kind of made me uncomfortable. When Mania walks over, or walks over, waddles over, does whatever she does, or he does. I'm sorry for assuming it, his or her gender. Yeah, it's wrong. Of but you. when he or she walks over there and is like making all the noises and I'm like, Oh, this is sad. And then starts licking. I'm like, well, this is not as sad as it was. Yeah. Five seconds don't ago. lick it. You know, if you're making the sounds, that's uh, one thing. Don't lick it up. And that, it just reminds me of, this is just a, this is a cat thing. Cats do not care mm. about you. If you died, listen, I love my cat and it, but five, five percent of the time it loves me too. But, <laughs> but I watched you walk in and it hiss and run yes. away at you. And I, did I dive at it? And yeah, I, I scared it and dove at it. So that's kind of the reason why. You but, say, why are you running from me, kid? Anyway. <laughs> but if I died in this household and my corpse was on the couch 
starting to decay, my cat would come and eat my flesh. That is just what <laughs> cats do. Even if it still had food in the bowl, it would still it just would. be like, screw you, man, and come. And it just shows you that they're not your true companions because a dog would not do that. And then so basically Prushka finds a way to manipulate herself into a white whistle. Which was cool. Well, is didn't wasn't she able to do that because of the connection that she had and the she wanted to go on the event? Dude, this is what I found from it. She wanted to go on the adventure. Mm-hmm. She wanted Papa Papa Bondrude, Papa Bondrude, Nanachi, Reg, Rico. That's what she wanted. Yep. She finally found the dream Let's that go she see wanted. See the dawn. Well, guess what? She's going to get it because obviously Reg, Nanachi, and Rico are all going. She is now the white whistle for Rico and Bondrude can see through Nanachi. So they're yeah. they're essentially they're it's doing- a happy ending. It's a happy ending. Yeah, that's what Nanachi tells her. She knows that Prushka most likely assumed the form of the uh, whistle or stone whatever, to be able to travel along, which is very it's beautiful. Sh- it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And Bondrude's right there with him. And that's the one thing that I don't really understand. Um, well, did you get the part where... Like, why... We talked about Bondrude. Wasn't his the way he got his white whistle through self-sacrifice? I think so. Which then... But with that guy, what does self-sacrifice even mean? I mean, assuming back then he had a little bit more of his humanity, so maybe it actually did hurt. Um, but yeah, are we even... Because obviously Bondrude's still around. Are we going to learn that him and Liza hit it off? He killed Liza, and that was his sacrifice? And I'm only saying that because of the two hands holding each other. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I feel like this is a lot of stuff that's going to get answered literally first episode next season. Not, maybe not first episode, but maybe, actually. Stuff that will be answered right away as soon as and this I mean, continues. They're going down to the, what does that even look like? I, I mean, How are they even able to do that after the way they've talked about it? I don't understand. Well, they're, they'll be able to go down. It's just... There's no chance of going back up. You know what I mean? You really think I, there will be, right? No. There. You don't think so? Well, Reg can go up, but maybe that's the maybe that's the key. You turn into one of those relics at the bottom, so you can go up and down as much as you want. But Nanachi and or can Nanachi go up? Because here's where you're not Nanachi <clears throat> can go up, right? Um. Can she? Well, I mean, she can to a certain extent. But, like, Reg, Reg can go up as much as he wants, and it doesn't do anything. Right. That's why I think that's the only way that if if there ever is a chance they're going to go back up. Is I mean, if, not that she obviously went up, but did they go? Did she make a point to say that they went up really slowly? Or, I don't know. She might be able to. And, dude, this just brings me back. Any Even the most simple relic... It makes me think that these are previous divers on their journeys. They've maybe even successful or not, and they turned into relics, and now they're little shit relics. Cause I don't the, know. The other thing is, uh, I feel like in I feel like there's going to be they're going to uncover some way to that they can perhaps go back up. But if they can't, and you're right, and it's only Reg and maybe Nanachi, because they're still telling a story up. At the very top. Are They'll they only notes. developing that for them to come down? I don't know, man. Because we obviously didn't get any of the up top right. this film. so. Huh. And then they also make a point to say that now, somehow he got more lives and Reg now has 10 incinerator uses. Yeah, that's and then that's what I was confused about. I don't know if it was because he plugged in and right. got more of his <laughs> memories back. Recharged. Which would be interesting if he could recharge. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, now that he has 10 left, that made it did make me a lot happier. I was like, okay, we'll have Reg a little bit longer. Because the moment that Reg dies in front of Rico, I might have to quit the show from my feelings. Whew. 
You, and it's not that she, she mentions... You think Reg dies in front of Rico or Rico dies in front of Reg? I think if way. I had, I think if I had to put money on it, I'd put it the other way. Okay. Well, what about not she seeing Mitty again? She said in this film. Yeah, they make a real point to keep talking about that too, and I don't. I think when she dies, she might see her, but other than that, I don't think it's happening. Yeah, I don't. <sighs> it's gonna get weird. It's gonna get weird. <laughs> it hasn't got weird yet, but it <laughs> will get weird. I well, it's already got weird. <laughs> think about yeah. going down. Uh, think about where they have to go into a. How many green, layers are there again? Green-eyed uh, abyss submarine to get down to the next part. Uh, you just know it's getting even weirder. What did you say? How many layers are there? Do you remember? Eight, maybe. Okay, so they they were Don't at the fifth. Now they're that. going to the sixth. Correct. Yeah. Or something like. I don't know. There was. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Um. Yeah. All right. You got anything else? I think that's about it. If anyone else has seen this film, you know, send us our send us your thoughts. Let us know what we got wrong. We, I'm sure we got a lot of shit wrong. Yeah, but. it was a lot to take yeah. in. Um, I didn't get didn't get to watch it twice. We wanted to get this one out. We had that open spot in our schedule. Now it's time to start yeah. gearing up for Attack on Titan. But it really would help to watch this twice and then yeah. even discuss it more because there's a lot in it. Um, I wouldn't say I'm excited for season two, but I'll be there for season two. <laughs> I'm sure we'll cover season yeah. two. It, it's it's great. It's good storytelling and it's great visuals and just a very unique story. Very and unique. Just, it's just so, never seen anything like it. Can it's you? so hard and depressing to watch. <laughs> All right, uh, you can follow us at Podcast Chronic on Twitter. And send us an email at thepodcastchronicles at gmail.com. Join the Discord. Subscribe on the YouTube. YouTube. Got anything else for us? Thumbs us up on YouTube. We're, uh, we're losing the viewership there. I, well, might have to do with you posting videos 10 days after we've released them on podcast channels. But sure, go ahead and uh, make your case there. I have been Ronnie. And I've been Chatty. Peace. Peace.